What's going on guys? It's Michael Gascon, the horse guru, and we are back with another virtual clinic. And today we are going to be working with Gypsy. Gypsy is a Mustang mare that came into us after bucking off her owner and being a little explosive. At one point she said it was impossible to get the saddle on her back because she was so explosive. Uh, Gypsy's been with us for a couple weeks and we're going through her training uh, process today. Today the place that she's at is we are going to be introducing a German Martingale to her. A German Martingale is simply a regular set of reins or split reins. In this case, it's a set of split reins, but these reins have special rings on the side. Now I'm going to be introducing a Y, the Y of the German Martingale. It has one clip on one side and it has strings on the other, and I'm going to be reaching underneath her and clip into the ring underneath the cinch. And these strings are going to come up from inside of my D-ring snaffle back to these rings. Now the reason this is so important is at the root of Gypsy's problems was simply we didn't have control of her head. Our mantra here at Gascon Horsemanship is control the head, control the horse. And Gypsy here didn't have a steering wheel. Um, they were riding her around, but she didn't give. The problem with this is when she started deciding, hey, I could just buck and I'll get out of it. I can just explode and I'll get out of it. There was no way to control her through that to get her over her, her issue, her fear, her problems. So now we've been working on getting her really soft left and right so that we can control where she goes and keep her from bucking. Now that we're two weeks in, we've been through the respect series, we've got her softer and easier. Now we're gonna look to put her head down. Controlling left and right controls where a horse goes. So they can't buck with you, run with you, rear with you if you control left and right. Now up and down controls how they go. She likes to carry her head real high and be stiff and straight faced. So we wanna get her head down and get her soft and easy and on a loose rein. So what this Martingale is gonna do is no matter where my hands go, it's gonna draw her head downward. And that's what we're gonna be looking for. So before we get started, I'm gonna cinch her up. In the beginning she was real cinchy and when you cinch her up she'd be, she would blow up like a balloon or, or a puffer fish and she'd be ready to pop. So I wanna cinch her up tight. Anytime we're introducing something new that we want, I'm gonna grab here. In this case, it, if this was just a snaffle work, I would grab here by the snaffle. Since I plan on using draw on her, I'm gonna grab her right here in front of the clip here so that she feels that draw. I'm gonna ask her to circle around me. and make sure she's okay with that. Change sides. So I really like that she's able to come out today and just be cinched up and be soft and easy and not get a hump in her back. That's really, really better than what she's been doing. The next thing is I'm gonna adjust this a little bit lower since she has kind of a short stubby neck there we go we're gonna hop on ask her to stand still horses are creatures of habit if we get on and go get on and go before long they'll go before we get on Again, the German Martingale is very beneficial and you see it a lot in cutting, working cow horses, anything that they want the horse to stay low and stay athletic and not waste any motion. So what we use it for is yes, it'll help us get a step around, it'll help us make the horse more athletic, but more importantly, it'll get the horse to relax. It'll get the horse to drop their head. Every time she does that and puts her pole below her withers, it releases an endorphin that kills adrenaline. So the more that she can put her head down, the more she can walk, trot, canter with her head down, the more she's gonna relax, the easier she's gonna be. First thing we do is hop on, sit still. Horses are creatures of habit. If we get on and go, they'll go before we get on. The next thing we wanna do is check our steering wheel. I'm just gonna slide my hand down the rein, pull to the seam of my jean in my pocket. And she's still at a place where she's still a little mouthy, I'm not even worried about that. This is When she gets where she's soft enough and she's not giving, she'll get a lot more comfortable with the bridle. So it's okay if she's mouthing on that bit a little bit. Nice. Very nice. So pros and cons of the German Martingale. 
pros is you don't have to have great hand placement to get the horse to drop their head because no matter where where i take my hands it's drawing for her head to go down so that really helps it really helps flatten that horse out and get that horse to wherever you want to go without wasting motion of picking their head up and fussing with the bridle cons is it makes it difficult to pull around and move their butt because you're attached to their chest so this is really built for neck reining. This is really built for moving their shoulders. So right here, we're just gonna start up since we can't move her butt with this martingale on, or not, not well anyway. We're gonna start asking her to move those shoulders. So we're gonna walk off. I'm gonna melt to my left cheek, take my left leg and left rein off, and then everything on the right is gonna start closing. I'm gonna release. When we are doing this, what I'm looking for is just to see that front left leg step out where I can see it. Ideally, I would like to see it completely step out to the left. It doesn't matter if your horse is pivoting perfect, if it doesn't matter if your horse is crossing over perfect, if they don't reach out from under themselves, they will never spin fast. Uh, the horse that spins fast is the horse that reaches out and grabs ground and covers ground whenever they turn around. There we go. It's important when I do this, look how I'll go back to neutral. Neutral is when the reins are even and centered. Two reins are touching, two legs are touching. When we're walking here, I have two legs touching this horse. The reason that that's beneficial is when I melt back here towards my pocket, look how this outside rein, this right rein, comes across her neck. There we go. So right there she got stuck, so I put a, a heel on her. There we go. I'm gonna melt to my left cheek. Left rein comes off, left leg comes off. She gets there. I don't even put a, a right heel on her. When we're going straight, two legs, two reins. One leg, one rein comes off. I put a spur on her. She moves, I release it. So notice the spur, she has all this opportunity to not get pressured where she can just move towards the open door. And that's the way that we think about it. Ask nicely by opening the door, give a warning by grabbing that outside rein. Ask nicely by opening the door, grab that outside rein, tell her with my spur. Hey, hey, come on, try a little harder. There we go. And she is just learning how to move her, her shoulders around like this. So I'm not too worried if she doesn't pivot on the proper foot. I'm not too worried if really does anything funky. All I'm looking for is that she goes left when the left reins come off and she steps out with that front left foot is really what I'm looking for. Another pro tip, before you ask that horse to step around to the left, you can leg yield them to the right. That's really gonna help that bend. Now switch. See how nice that was? We'll leg yield her to the right. Notice how I have my right leg and right rein off of her. Switch, shut, shut down the forward motion, and send her through. Very nice. Right leg and right rein coming off of her. She steps this way. We have that bend. Stop, switch. You don't understand how much, how often we just spend time walking the horse around getting those buttons lighter, getting those buttons better. She makes that adjustment. So watch this, whenever I want her pushing outward on that circle, she has her bend to the inside, which is what we want. Then I'm gonna push my inside leg and rein on her, take my outside leg and rein off of her, and she makes that circle bigger. Really nice, really nice. Do it again. Very nice. So a lot of times people think whenever they send a problem horse for training that it's a cloud of dust and the dogs barking and cowboying out. When in, really you guys are seeing behind the scenes with this virtual clinic, uh, what's going on? This is just our regular, our regular schmegular uh, training day. Same pair of britches uh that i wear on a regular day same shirt same hat same arena same saddle same setup i'm looking for the same things so 
though day one or day two might be exciting because you have to establish um, that you're the leader now and they might not like that, not appreciate any leadership or don't think they need any. Once you get over day one or day two, you have that sorted out. There's so many more days that are just like this here where we're really just trying to get her, really just trying to get her where, where she's gonna give and be easy. The way that her mind is right now, quiet, head down, listening, this is so much easier to teach than the horse that came that was tense and tight, that was tense and tight, had her head in the air, real stiff in the face. At least once a day when you're working on your spins, you need to push that horse outside of that comfort zone because that's what's gonna get them to try. So in that scenario, she's doing good, great. So now I just wanna make sure that I ask, there we go. Whenever you have these split reins, it's pretty easy to just reach up, touch on their shoulder and get a little effort out of them. There we go. It's okay when you do this that you ask them a little bit that it kind of falls apart where they were going soft and easy and they were putting their feet where you wanted. When you ask them to get out of their comfort zone and try that, that they kind of don't know where to put their feet, their head kind of gets out of position. That's okay and you need to do that at least, at least once, twice a day because that's gonna make them move more efficiently. That's gonna let them know that they can. And every day that comfort zone will change. Notice before I touch her shoulder, before I touch her shoulder, I already have her bent, I already have her headed that way. Whenever you ask the horse to turn around too, something else that I see a lot of times is people grab the button or touch the button and they don't pulsate. Pulsating, clicking with your mouth, bumping with your leg, bumping with that outside rein, that's what really gives the tempo. And release. So right there she got stuck, I just stuck with it. Good girl. Nice. And Oh, good girl, good girl. Notice out of all that time, you know, we spent five minutes, seven minutes uh, doing that right there. It was all to one side. I rather whole ass one thing than half ass two things. It's much better to make sure they really understand how to come off of that pressure than to go back and forth. I was taught as a kid, everything you do to one side, you immediately do it to the other side. But when you do it with stuff like this, it it's very hard for them because you're going back and forth and they don't get the rhythm of it. They don't get it figured out and then they have a hard time. So if you can just get them soft and easy to that one side and again, you say, oh, well, her butt's moving. She's not doing that. That's okay. We all have to suck at something before we get good at it. And how do we get good at something? Through focus and repetition. This is just the beginning of her being soft enough in the face to actually be able to move over. If you can't get your horse to step around, more than likely, they're just too stiff in the face. Because if they're soft in the face and they're not willing to run through it, well then you can bump their side. You can pop their shoulder with a crop. You can ask of them and they'll look to get away from it. If your horse is too stiff and you do that, well then they're rearing or jumping forward or doing something wonky versus looking to, to listen to your leadership, listen to your reins where you're trying to ask them to go. So it's important to make sure that your horse is soft first, you've been through the respect series, you can check out the Respect Series on our membership. We've got over 700 videos on the bio below. You can check out the link. But it's all about softness, and then we start getting that handle. All right, once we got her warmed up a little bit to that side, we're gonna ask her to trot off. Notice I'm sitting back on her because I want her to want to put her head down. Whenever I want her to circle that cone, whenever I want her to circle that cone, I'll take the inside rein off of her. 
So she's there fiddle farting around with the bridle and that's okay. At least she's not pulling on me. And as she gets quieter and easier, and she gets more accustomed to being on that loose rein, she gets more accustomed to being soft and easy. There we go. Eyes up. I don't change anything just because we're cantering. Cantering doesn't mean we're changing our seat, we're changing our hands, none of that. Cantering is just one more gear. A lot of folks change the way they're sitting. They get all uptight, they sit forward. I want her to think, hey, this is easy. So you see her kind of fiddle farting around with the bit because of course, the faster you go, the stiffer your horse gets. Every time she releases my hands, I'm giving, I'm giving her more rain. So right there. So now I feel like I'm pedaling her. So the next thing I'm gonna do is stop her. Wait till I get her straight and square. And ho. Oh. Wait till she, she gives her head, then I release. Really good job, young lady. Really good job. Good girl. So that is really awesome of her. She was stiff and tight whenever she came. On top of that, she was very difficult to get moving. Very difficult to get moving. So we had to really get her soft and as her face freed up, her feet freed up and she was willing to work. So that's the best that she's done to date of just being able to, to trot and canter, go exactly where you wanna go and be soft and easy on the reins. You still see her mouth in the bridle a little bit, that's okay, it's just part of it. The softer she gets, the, the less of the mouth. Before she was gaping her mouth and really pulling on it, now she doesn't wanna pull on it, uh, but she's fiddle farting around. As she transitions from that to a, a solid bridle, a more comfortable bridle, she'll mouth less and less, and the softer and easier she gets, the less she'll fiddle fart with her mouth. But I'm loving how she's staying flat, just because I say canter, it's not exciting. There's not a lot of energy. Notice when I canter off, I didn't do this. I didn't get out in front of her. If we are going off on the left lead, and remember leads, they're not very complicated. It just means that the feet on the left are leading. If we're going to the left, the front left leg is the one that needs the most elevation and the back right is the one that's pushing. So it makes no sense to sit, stand over that front left because that's the one that needs to get off of the ground. I need to sit over the back right. That's the one that's pushing. That's the last one to leave the ground whenever we canter off is the back right. So I'm gonna sit back and a little shift it to the outside. That's gonna really allow her to pick that shoulder up and pick up her, her left lead, her proper lead when we're going to the left. I'll do the same thing whenever we go to the right. Really enjoying how quiet she is. She was lazy but she was explosive, she was lazy, but she was spooky and she was looking for things to, to get in trouble with. Now she doesn't want trouble. The second that we, we tell her it's okay to stop, we release, let her go. When I asked her to canter and she was kind of willing to go on her own and she was kind of driving into it, I don't want to stop her when she's not thinking stop. I want to keep cantering her around in circles for a little bit and you'll start seeing where she starts getting back over her butt and she's not pulling forward. It's not. She's not catching gears and accelerating. She's actually being pedaled. That means I have to grab her with my calves to keep her going. Once I get her there, where she's very relaxed and I get her where I'm pushing her with my legs, she's thinking stop. Number, couple pro tips. I wanna make sure when I come around to stop her that I'm stopping her when she is straight. When she's straight and she's square, so she learns how to put her back feet in the dirt straight and square. The next thing that I wanna make sure is that I'm sitting back way before I ask her to stop. So her head is down. Her head is down, I'm sitting over her butt, so her withers are up. Well now, if I drive her forward, her withers are up, her butt and his head, head is down, then I take my legs off of her, boom, there's somewhere for her butt to go. But if I throw myself back, that's gonna hollow out her back. It's gonna flatten out her back, and that's gonna pick her head up and pick her butt up. Well now she's gonna scotch, and we're gonna bounce across there. We don't wanna do that. Well whatever we do to the left, 
got to do to the right. There we go. If you can get a horse broke in power of the circle, you've got a horse pretty broke. And what do I mean by that? I mean, I'll start asking that horse to trot. Wait for it to get a little soft in my hands. Look how handy she's getting and how she wants to go wherever I want her to go. When I take her off, she is getting there. It's hard to believe that this is the same horse from, from two weeks ago. Eyes up when I want to go straight. Two reins, two legs. Whether you're using one hand or two, it's the same. When I want to turn, the inside leg and rein come off. When I want to go straight, I'll look straight and put two reins and two legs. If we keep the steering that simple, if we keep the steering that simple, you'll get any horse to steer, I mean, just amazingly. There we go, she's starting to soft. I really didn't want to canter her until she softened. Now I'm gonna ask her to canter, sit back into the outside. Right there through the circle. She gets a little strung out, a little heavy in my hands. When she does that, I put my legs on her, touch her in the mouth, touch her in the mouth, release. A little left, right, left, right. Drive her through that turn. Wait till she softens on me. Give her her head back. Drive her forward with my heels. So she's kind of laying on me. There we go. Bump to the inside. So she's kind of laying on me a little bit. So I'm gonna bump her to the inside, bump her to the inside. Basically just using my pinky and my ring finger. My thumb and my pointer finger are holding my right rein in the placement. My, my pinky is opening and closing. So there we go. When she softens, I let her go. And, oh. There we go, good girl. Good girl. Nice, nice, honey. Bring her right over here. So once you get to this point, you're able to, if they're laying on you, just hold the placement of your reins here and just open and close that hand it. As long as she's driving forward and going forward, my legs are telling her to go forward, and my hand is saying, hey, soften up, soften up, soften up, soften up, soften up. Even your car can make you buckle the seatbelt. That car's not holding a gun to you. That car's not beating you. It's just going ding, 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 ding. All right, fine, and you buckle up. Well, it's the same way for your microwave. I got a new microwave in my house. Oh my goodness, that thing dings forever. It doesn't stop dinging as long as the food's in there. Ding, ding, okay, okay, I'm eating it, I'm eating it, calm down. It's the power of persistence. So I'm not trying to outstrong her. She was so strong in her little stubby neck, she's so strong through her shoulders and neck and head that she would just pull on you. If you played her game and tried to pull back on her, it didn't matter what you put on her, what, you, what system you were working. If you played her game, she was gonna beat you every time. But the fact that we get her off center and that we'll be persistent, hey, hey, even while we're cantering, I'm saying, hey, there's no difference between the walk and the canter. I expect your head in the same place and I expect the same amount of softness. Any of you guys watching, if you have any horse experience, you know, it doesn't matter how soft the horse is, when you scare them or when you go faster, the horse gets stiff. So our job here at Gascon Horsemanship is to get those horses softer as we're going through that process. Can I go fast? Can I canter? And can she leave her head down? Can I can her and her still turn great? Awesome. Give her that little mental break. And then to finish up our session, we've already turned good to the left. So we're gonna put in some turnarounds to the right. Get her softened off my bridle first. Thank you, ma'am. We're gonna open up this right rein. There we go. Think about General rule of thumb, broad stroke statement, think about drawing her to the seam of your jean in your pocket. Because when you draw her there from her face to her hip bone, if you bring it right across your hip, that's basically what you're asking there. 
I don't really like to cross over with my outside hand, so if I'm using two hands, I like to leave the outside hand on their neck. What I don't want to see is this. I don't want you neck reining up here because they'll bend their head and neck and not give you their shoulders. Same thing, we're going to leg yield her. Leg yield her to the left, spin her to the right. There we go. Leg yield her to the left. So if I'm leg yielding her to the left, that means my left leg and left rein are off of her. My right leg and right leg are on her. Now I'm going to spin her to the right. So my right leg and right rein come off. My left leg and left rein come onto her. There we go. Switch. There we go. Drive her forward. Push her over again. Switch. Pulsate with my reins. Pulsate with my hands. Very nice. And ho. Everything works great. Look how she's not even sweating. I want her to get to the point where she's not sweating and this isn't hard and she just does all this stuff efficiently. The very last thing I'm going to do to finish up this, this session is I'm going to work on her backup. Backing up has changed my horsemanship. I hung out with, with Stacy Westfall, and we got into our session. She says, you go forward enough. You need to learn how to back. And I'm saying, but my horse knows how to back. I picked up the rein, the horse backed up. She's like, oh, that's cute. This is how I want you to back. And for eight hours, we worked on different backup exercises. We worked on getting that horse softer and easier. Since then, Every ride, I try to get a horse to back up 100 to 300 feet every time. The easiest way to start this is put them on the rail. And the reason I say it's, it's the easiest way to start it is because you're the most likely to keep them straight when you're on the rail. Oh, I want you to sit down in your pockets, put your belt on the back of your saddle. Your hands are only to catch them if they try to go forward like that. So I'm moving my legs. There we go. There we go. Er, nope, not that way. Good girl. Good girl. So I initiate me asking her by moving my legs. And when she backs up, I stop my legs. I ask her to back up by moving my legs. Shoot. Try to keep her straight if I can. And release. Oh, so I want you to think about the spin and the backup in this. I don't want to pull them or push them through the backup and the spin. Sometimes in the beginning you have to to show them the concept, but very quickly I want to back this horse up, start moving my feet, and I want her to keep backing up. Ho, oh. until I ask for something different. The way that you get that done is kind of doing what I just did. She took a couple steps with my feet not moving. And then I told her, ho. What's the significance of telling her ho in a spin or telling her ho in a backup? When you put a ho on the end to stop it, that lets her know, oh, I'm supposed to do this until you tell me to stop. When I ask her to trot, she trots until I ask her to do something different. When I ask her to canter, she canters until I ask her to do something different. Well, we need to do the exact same thing with our backup and with our spin, where whenever we ask them to back up, Notice how my heels are forward, kind of on the cinch. My toes are pointed outward. Oh, good girl. I want to push on the front of the barrel and I really want to pick up her ribs. A horse that backs up good, they're going to drop their head, <coughs> pick up their belly. Now their back feet have somewhere to go. You can tell she hasn't been backed up too much because she really doesn't know where to go with that energy. Good girl. That. Good girl. Once we get that horse backing up good, we're going to get that horse where she'll steer backwards. She's not there yet, but 
it won't take but a couple more days. By next week, she'll be going backwards good enough to be able to steer her. Look how I round up my back. She tried to step around on me. Make sure to keep two, two legs and two reins on her because steering backwards, oh, good girl. Steering backwards is the same as steering forwards. When I take a leg off, even if we're going backwards, if I take a leg off, I want her shoulders to go towards the open door. And when there's two legs and two reins, I want her to stay straight. Today is like the concept lesson for backing up. Another way to do this if you're having a real hard time is put your eyes on the, the pole, the fence post in front of you, or a tree, or a dog, or a cone, or whatever, and keep your shoulders and belly button pointing towards it so that whenever she tries to turn or get away from it, there we go, when she tries to turn or get away from it, you stay facing it. That's gonna make her only feel comfortable if she stays straight with the pole that's in front of you. Good girl. Good girl. Now we turn and do the same thing one more time. Help her through that resistance. Oh, very nice. So what was very nice about that is I waited until, I waited until she was taking a couple steps on her own and she was kind of drawing back on her own to stop her. So she'll start thinking, oh, if I move back on my own, he'll stop me. Oh, good job, girl, good job. So that's what a regular session at Gascon Horsemanship looks like. We're able to work on her turnaround, getting her softer in the face, getting her more relaxed. If you can believe that this horse is the same horse from two weeks ago, it just will blow your mind. But when you realize it's simply control the head, control the horse, and there's a system in place. And if your horse is acting up, it's supposed to be a trained riding horse, there's holes in the fundamentals. So by going through the respect series, we're able to identify the issues and fill in the cracks in the foundation, fill, up, fill in those problemental, fundamental problems. And we're able to get a horse like this. She's gonna be freaking awesome and her owner's gonna be so happy uh, to get her back she, because she's turned into an awesome As we are doing a giveaway where you get a free week, a free week here at Gascon Horsemanship at a retreat, you have to be the first person to send my special code, secret code, to GasconHorsemanship at gmail.com. If you're the first person watching this on live, more importantly, the first person that takes initiative and sends this special code to our, our email address, you'll get a free week, a $3,000 value right here at Gascon Horsemanship. All right, guys, the special code is Teal Eel. I repeat, Teal Eel. Send that to the email, guys, and you'll get a free week. Stay with us. Look forward to having you here. Thank you so much for watching. Gypsy here was happy to be our model for the day, and I will see you guys in the next video.